Sad thing, managing death in a short sale. What do you do if you're doing a short sale and one of the clients has died or even possibly died while you're doing a short sale? So we're gonna go through how to manage this situation. It is manageable. It's a little more work on your part, but you can get through a short sale with a death of one of the owners. So what happens if somebody, if one of your clients, you go up to your client and you find out that somebody died, say mm -hmm. their spouse, they died. And so the bank is requiring certain documents in order for the title, what happens? The first thing you should do when you initially talk to somebody about doing a short sale is ask them, has there been any death? Has anybody that owned the house died? So you're finding really out important. right up front. You're not trying to figure this out way into the process. So if somebody has died, there's in here in Texas, there's a couple of legal hurdles that you have to um, get through. And I'll try to explain it and we'll go through this. Let's say you have a couple, John and Mary, and sadly, Mary's died. John, the husband, has the right to um, live in the house for the remainder of his life. But let's say he now, since Mary's dead and doesn't have the income, she can't he can't afford the house anymore. So now he's faced with a short sale. Now, here's where it gets complex. <laughs> if they had children, the Mary's ownership moves down to the children. So let's say they had two children. John, the husband, retains 50% of the ownership of the house. Mary's 50% goes down to the two children. So okay, each so child has how do you figure th How do you figure that out? You have to ask. Okay. <laughs> you have to ask them who the heirs, you have to ask the husband who the heirs are. Now, it's going to get even more complex. Mm -hmm. Let's say Mary had children from a previous marriage years ago. Those children are also included. So John and Mary had two children, and let's say Mary had another child from a previous marriage. That child also has claim to the house. So those three children now have to be involved. Okay, so you pinpoint all the children, mm -hmm. you figure out who owns what, and now what do you do? The next step is you have to do an affidavit of heirship. Well, it's an affidavit of heirship along with a, a some sort of deed that an attorney or a title company can help you with that is going to transfer those children's ownership to the surviving spouse. So it'd probably be best if you had an attorney write this document up because um, like everything else, you can try to do it yourself, but an attorney will be able to put the correct verbiage that will be accepted by a title company. So it's really best if you have an attorney if you're in this kind of situation, right? I, I agree 100%. Have the attorney put together this document that transfers ownership. And the reason why you want to transfer the ownership from the children to the surviving spouse is then the surviving spouse has the ability to sell the house um, when, when the house is in closing. Right, and for this specific situation, when you're in a short sale, the reason why it would benefit them is because there's no equity, there's nothing that they can actually have ownership to. The property is upside down, so it's in their best interest if they sign the property over so we can get this done, so it doesn't foreclose. Yeah, and if one of the children is saying, no, no, I don't want to sign it um, because I want my part of that house, basically what they're part claiming the <laughs> is claiming an upside down house, which is in debt, so right. I'm sure the bank would be more than happy to have one of the children pay a portion of the debt, but that's right. not the best choice. So you may need to explain it to the children that there is no equity, the house is upside down, it, you owe more than it's worth, so if you're claiming it, you're claiming debt. So probably the most fun about the situation is probably finding the kids. Yes, um, we've got a couple of scenarios. we got one going on right now where um, there was a couple, the wife died, the husband was survived, and there was seven children, actually there was nine children. Yeah. And they're spread across three or four states. And luckily the surviving spouse knew the children, had a good relationship with them and was able to identify them. Sadly, two of those children died, yeah. but they died before the mother, so they don't have any claim. All we had to do was go after and find the seven surviving children and have each one of them sign a document. And in case you can't, we've had a, um, a property before where we couldn't track down the children. Uh, it was from a previous marriage, the kids? Yes, um, this one, it was a husband and wife. The husband died. He had had, I think it was seven children by three different women. And the surviving spouse, when he died, had no contact with these children, didn't even know their names. 
Yeah. So on that one, obviously we couldn't do it. We we just told her, I'm sorry, we couldn't help you because without knowing who those surviving children are, you can't do this. Like any situation when you're doing a short sale, make sure you're getting all of this up front. Um, that way you're not towards closing and you're finding all of this out after you went through the whole process of getting it approved. You know, you want to make sure you know what your hurdles are at the very beginning. Very, very good advice, Nicole. <laughs> make sure you do your homework up front. And also, if you are doing a short sale and you've got a debt involved and you want to get more information, give us a call. Um, we'll help you out. And also, if you're not wanting to do a short sale and you want somebody to do it for you, we'd be more than happy to help you with it. Um, you can reach us at 972-342-0011. Thanks for watching. Thank you.